At the end of the last video, we had designed the fold dir abstract function that operates on a directory and all its subdirectories, traversing the directory, the subdirectories, and the list of images, calling the combination function arguments as it goes through and supplying the base case arguments in the appropriate places. We saw how we could use that function to make a copy of a directory in the same way we can use fold r to make a copy of a list. Now let's try to do some more interesting things with the function. In this same fold dir starter file, we've got some problems to work on. The first one is to design a function that consumes a dir and produces the number of images in the dir and its subdirectories. We did this function earlier, of course, when we didn't have the abstract function. So we're familiar with what it needs to do. Let's just start following the design recipe. So let's see, it consumes a dir, and it produces the number of images. So that's a natural. Produce number of images in D and all its sub -durs. And a reasonable stub is going to be something like count images of D is 0. And let's make some examples. Now, up here in our data definitions, we've got some examples. D empty is an empty directory, and DF just has friends. What I'm going to do just to make this a little bit easier is I'm going to take these examples and just temporarily cop them, copy them back down here to where we were working. I can't run this program now because I'd have these duplicated, but at least I can see them and use them to write my check expects. So I'll quickly write my check expects. Let's see, check expect. Here's one example. Count images of DMT. That's empty, so it's going to be zero. Check expect count images of D, F would be 3, and count images of the most complicated example, which is DMP, would be check, expect, count images, D, DMP. Let's see, that's got these three directories in it, FTP. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 images. And now I'll delete these here because remember they're still up top where they belong. And now I've got my signature purpose stub examples. I can run the examples, which of course will fail because zero is not three or seven, but that's okay. Now we're set to go. So now we're going to template this as a we're going to template this as a call to fold dir and the dir parameter is going to be d and there's our template and let's go remind ourselves how many let's do a command e here so we get a little bit more room to work with fold dir takes one two three four five parameters. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 arguments to fold dir. And there they are. Now we got to figure out what they need to be. Let's go look at fold dir. The arguments are these three combination functions and those two base cases. Well, we've written this function a lot of times before. The two base cases are 0 because we're counting up all the images in this list and all the images in this list, so the two base cases are zero. We can put those in right away. And this combination is easy. This is just plus, right? We're going to add however many images are in the first directory to however many images are in the rest of the directories. So C2 is just plus. But what does C1 have to do? Well, C1 has to ignore its first argument, because its first argument 
is the directory name. Remember, what would we do if we were just kind of editing this function? If this was a template and we were editing it, we would put plus and then we would kind of comment out the rest of this line. All this stuff would go away. Because we don't want to include the directory name at all. It's just a string. We can't add it up. But we can't, we can't do that now. We have to provide the function c1. So what we need is a function that ignores its first argument and adds its second and third arguments together. Now, of course, racket doesn't come with such a silly function in it. So we're going to have to make one. And since it's kind of a silly function, we won't make it at top level. We'll make it using local. Because we're unlikely to want this function anyplace else anytime soon. So we'll make a local function called define ignore arg1 add args. 2 and 3g. That's kind of a long name for a function. I'm not going to call it that. I'm just going to call it c1. And it'll take three arguments, a, b, and c, right? I'll give them better names. The first argument, the first argument is the name of the directory. The second argument is the result of the mutual recursion on the list of directories. And the third argument is the result of the recursion on the list of images. So what I'm going to do is I'll call those the recursion on list of directories and the recursion on list of images. That's what those arguments are. And all C1 does is, it's so simple, we'll just put it on one line, is it adds that and that. It basically ignores its first argument. So that would be C1. Let me fix my parens here fix my indentation. So that's C1. And now let's see what C3 has to be. Well, we're counting up the images. If we were, again, if we were editing the template function, we would put plus one here and then we would comment all the rest of that out. Because the image itself doesn't matter to us, we just count it as one. But again, we can't edit the abstract function. We have to hand in an appropriate argument for C3. So here we need a function that ignores its first argument and adds one to its second argument. So let's just define that. Its first argument is an image, and its second argument is the natural recursion on the rest of the list of images, so we'll call that recursion on LOI. And it's just going to be plus one R LOI. So that's C3. Let's try it. Oops, I forgot to comment out my stub. I'll comment out my stub there. Hey, all tests pass. So let's think about this for a minute. Let's see how why it's going to work. What I'm going to do is actually just temporarily, I'm going to take this and I'll copy it up here temporarily so we can kind of look at it at the same time. I'll put it in a box that goes right below here. So let's think about it for a second. What we're saying is that for B1, we're going to have a 0. For B2, we're going to have a 0. For C2, we're going to have a plus. C1 is going to be a function that ignores its first argument and just adds together its second and third argument. That's C1. And C3 is going to be a function that ignores its first argument and adds 1 to its second argument. And of course, that's what we would do if we were going to edit the template. But because we've got this lovely fold abstract function, we can write this in a much more concise way like this. And then the design of our count image function looks like this. And once you, once you get kind of comfortable with these fold functions, if you really imagine that what fold is doing is it's just walking through the directory and its subdirectories and you're just providing the combination functions, this is really a nice way to read it. It says in the directory combination function, I ignore the name and I add together the other two. In the LOD combination function I just add, 
in the LOI combination function, I ignore the image and I add one to the recursion on the rest of the list. And the two base cases are zero. And if this asymmetry and how this is written bothers you, then you could just do this if you like. And maybe this is a nicer way to do it. So now, actually, sorry, I meant to call that C2, sorry. And so now I've got names for all three combination functions. And I'll test it again just to make sure it's working. And it is. So great, that's designing the function to count all the images in a directory and its subdirectories. I can get rid of the stub now, save a little room. That's it using folder. The next problem is to design a function that consumes a dir and produces a list of all the images in the directory and its subdirectories. So this function is not going to be very different. Instead of adding up how many they are, it's going to produce a single flat list. Remember that if you have two lists and you want to put them together in a flat list, the function you want to use for that is append. What I want you to do actually is I want you to stop the video, solve this problem for yourself, and then start the video again and I'll show you my solution. Okay, I hope that you've designed a function that takes a directory and produces a list of all the images in the directory. Let me show you my solution. What I've got here is I've got the first part, because we know how to do the first part. I've got the signature and the purpose, and I've got a good example, and I've got a stub. So I can just jump directly to the more interesting part of the part that we're learning now. Let's see, I'm going to template this function as a call to folder and folder takes c1, c2, c3, base1, base2 and a directory and you know since I know that there's several combination functions I'm gonna go ahead and set myself up with a local because I probably am gonna need it and now so the question is what do I put in the various combination positions. Again, it can be useful to just go back and look at folder itself. Let's see. Well, in the two base cases, fun for LOD needs to be building up a list of images, and fun for LOI needs to be building up a list of images. So the two base cases are going to be empty. So let's go put those in. We'll comment out this stub here. So the two base cases are both going to be empty because we're building up lists. Now let's go back up here and look at folder. Well, what happens in C3? Well, C3 is the easiest case. Here we're building up a list of images, and the first argument is an image, and the second argument is a list of images. So C3 just becomes cons. So for C3, my scrolling is not turning out as nicely as I'd like. For C3, we're just going to have cons. I'll give it a name. I'll name it C3. C3 takes an image and the result of the recursion on a list of images, and it's just going to be cons the image onto the recursion, which of course is a list of images. So that's C3. We'll put it there. Going back to folder, let's look at C2. Well, let's see. Fun for dir is going to produce a list of images, and fun for LOD is going to produce a list of images. So C2 is just going to be append. So C2 just wants to be append. So we'll say define C2. It's the recursion on a directory and the recursion on a list of directories is just append those two together. And that's C2. And now let's go see what's C1 got to be. 
C1 gets called with the directory name, and then this will be a list of images, and this will be a list of images. We don't care about the directory name. So this is going to be one of those combination functions that ignores its first argument and does something with the second two arguments. And what it's going to do with them is append them together. So let's define now C1. Define C1 of the name, the recursion on the list of directories, the recursion on the list of images. And what's it going to do? It's going to append the recursion on the list of directories with the recursion on the list of images. And we'll put a C1 there. And let's try that. Test passed. Okay, now I think you're starting to get the hang of this. I'm not going to do the function that renders the directory and all its subdirectories in the video. The solution is in the lecture notes, so you can get it from there. But you should, of course, try to do it yourself first. Okay? And, you know, the exact way that you decide to lay out the directories, of course, is up to you, whether you put them beside each other or above each other, or whether you put nice space or things like that. There's a simple solution in the lecture notes. You might make a fancier solution, and that's fine, too. What I want to do instead is this one last problem here, which is to design a function that consumes a directory and a string. And the function looks in Dur and all its subdirectories for a directory with the given name. If it finds such a directory, it should produce true. If not, it should produce false. And we want to use full dir again. Now what I'm going to do just to get us going a little quickly is I'm just going to paste in a signature, purpose, and examples, and stub that I've already got. It consumes a string in a directory and produces a Boolean. And it looks for a directory name that name. If found, it produces true. Otherwise, it produces false. And just using the examples from the starter, if I look in the directory called empty for empty, I get true. If I look in the empty directory for x, I get false. If I look in the big directory for teachers, I get true. If I look in the big directory for x, I get false. And there's a stub. So now let's get going on the new part. I'll template it again as a call to fold dir with a bunch of arguments, c1, c2, c3, b1, b2, and the actual dir. And, you know, I know up front that I'm going to have some complicated combination functions here, so I'll set myself up with a local just to start with. Okay, there we go. Now our parens are nicely balanced and we're ready to go. So now let's think what's going to go in the different positions. You know, what I've been doing the last times is that I always started with the base cases and I started with C3. But this time I'm going to start with C1 because all I'm really doing is starting with the easiest one. C1 is the one that's going to find the directory name or not. So let's look at what C1 is going to do. C1 is going to be called with the directory name, the result of the recursion on the list of subdirectories, and the result of the recursion on the list of images. And now what's it got to do? Well, it's holding the directory name in its hand. We can template it if we want. It's holding the directory name in its hand. And it's trying to find a directory name name. So there's going to be a check here to see, well, is this the one we're looking for? And if that's the one that we're looking for, we should produce true. Let's see, the images aren't going to have anything to do with it at all. We can't possibly find a directory with a given name in a list of images. So the real question is going to be, in the recursion on the list of directories, do we find it? So this really just becomes a war. If we find it here, produce true. Otherwise, if we find it in the list of subdirectories, produce true. So that's C1. Sorry, C1. 
Now let's do C3 because it's the next easiest one. What does C3 do? Well, C3 is operating on this list of images. It gets called on each image in the list and the recursion on the rest of the list. But we can't find a directory with a given name in a list of images. It's never going to come out of here. So C3 kind of, you know, just isn't doing anything for us. Unfortunately, we still have to provide it, and B2 isn't doing anything for us. It's never going to come out of here. So since we have to put something, we'll just put something. Let's just say that C3, which gets an image and the recursion on the list of images, is just going to produce false. It's not in here, is what C3 is saying. And so C3 will be false. And B2 will also be false. Now, in a funny way, it doesn't really matter what C3 does because, because C1 is never looking at the recursion on the list of images. So whatever value C3 produces is never going to get looked at. But we still have to make C3 produce a value. That's the thing about abstract functions is you know, they're going to do the thing they do. You sometimes have to give them an argument, kind of like the identity argument we've used before. That's just a placeholder that says, go ahead and call me, and I'm just not going to do anything interesting. That's what's happening with C3. But now let's go look at C2. Well, let's see. C2 gets called on the recursion on the first directory in the list, and it gets called on the recursion on the, sec on the rest of the directories in the list. So it might be in here or it might be in here. So really C2 again is just OR and B1 is false. If you get to the end of an empty list of directories and you haven't found the thing you're looking for then false is the answer. So B1 is going to be false and C2 is going to be OR again. So let's do that. C2 gets called on the recursion on a directory and the recursion on a list of directories, and it's just going to be or ardor rlod. So this will be C2, and this will be false. And when I put B2 there, I was supposed to put false. Sorry about that. Oops, I forgot to comment out my stub. Let's try it. This test passed. Okay, all these tests pass. And think about what this is saying. You know, I might format this a little bit differently. Like this. If we start to understand by now that C1 is the combination inside the directory traversal and C2 is the combination inside the list of subdirectory traversal and C3 is the combination inside the list of image traversal. Then we can read these quite clearly. They say, look, it's never in the list of images. When we're traversing the list of directories, it's just or. Maybe it's in the first, maybe it's in the rest. Who knows? It's really in the recursion on directories itself that we check the directory name if we find it it's true otherwise it might have been in the list of subdirectories so there you go there's some nice functions written using the abstract fold dir function and what i hope you can see from these is how easy it is to write these kinds of functions that traverse the directory and all its subdirectories once you've got a fold function based on the templates. So now let's get back to that thing I said about loops. About a week ago when we wrote this right, which we know what that produces, that adds the numbers in the list. I think some of you 
maybe who programmed before and have seen loops said, wow, it took us a long time to get to that simple way to add up a bunch of numbers. Because for a few weeks there, we were having to write the whole template, cond, empty, dot, dot, dot. And you might have been saying, why are we doing it this complicated way? And now you can really see the answer. It's true, it took us a while to write this simpler way of adding the numbers in a list. But because of the way we did it, I hope you can now see that fold on a list and fold on a tree, be it an arbitrary tree like this, or you could design a fold for a binary tree, or fold on any structure for which we have data definitions that have reference, mutual reference or self-reference, we can always define a fold, and that fold can always traverse the structure. If all you've ever learned about is for loops in other kinds of programming languages, it's very hard to see how to get a for loop to traverse a tree. But if you learned about types with reference and self-reference and designing templates that mirror that structure, then you know how to design fold for any structure like that. And you can understand how to easily traverse anything and how to, in some sense, write your own special loop function. That's what folder is. It's our own special way of traversing this structure. And you could write one of those for any structure you want. So the reason we didn't do loops first is that we wanted to be sure you could design functions that would traverse flat structures like lists and natural numbers, but also structures like trees, binary trees, and arbitrarity trees. This gives us the ability to do much more than we can do with just loops, but we'll have to talk a little bit more about that next week.